internet today is thursday january the 5th 2012 and i hope your new year's was running in safely but most of all fun something i hinted about last year or you know mid-december if you want to call that last year was the fact that some of the guys at paper crane decided to send me a bunch of stuff and asked me to review it i said yes just as long as i was allowed to be honest they agreed and uh... here's the first of those reviews the product i'm reviewing is download only it's a twenty five minute video called sunk by Seth Rovner, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right, it could be Rovner, it could be Rovner, but the first name is definitely Seth. And what Sunk is, is essentially it's a in-the-box card trick. There's two different variations that can be formed with the, the effect, uh, and essentially what I'll do is I'll show you the first uh, routine, or what he calls the routine, I'll show you that right now. Can you cut off about a third of the deck for me? Great. I'm going to look at the cards that you have in your hand, and take out any card you want to pick. Got it. I'll take the rest of the cards first. You can show uh, show them with the cards. Great, I'll take that. We're gonna place it uh, just about the middle of the deck. All right. We're gonna leave it sticking out so you can keep an eye on it. Still, I'm gonna put the cards back inside the box. All right. Do that. I'm actually gonna push this card in so it's in with the rest of the deck. And watch what's gonna happen. This is called the sinking card. You're gonna see these cards sink down, and one card's gonna stay up. Watch one, two, and on the third, just like that. And now we're back. So essentially now you, you know what the trick looks like, you know what the trick does. A spectator selects a card, uh, the card is then signed or, or whatever, placed into the deck, sticking out. The deck is then placed into a box, but not fully. Uh, and then with a quick little snap or a shake, all the cards fall down with the exception of one card. That would be the spectator signed card. Now, on, this, uh, on the video, you get uh, five what he calls routines. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, through each of the issues that I have with this, uh, starting with the first and most, uh, most glaring one, in my opinion. Uh, and that is the sound. The sound uh, is not up to par in my eyes. I don't know what it is with every YouTube magician or every magic company out there that likes to put a really solid bass-driven uh, music track in behind the, uh, the, the magician teaching this, the segment of the trick or, or the whole routine, whatever. But all you hear is like, boom, 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 while you're trying to hear this guy speak. Now, but his, his, his speech at times is being drowned out by the, the music track that is behind the audio, the, uh, the spoken word track that would allow you to actually listen and hear what's going on. Uh, it doesn't happen all the time, like so the music's there all the time, he doesn't get drowned out all the time, but there are key moments where it's like, well, I, I just missed that, rewind it. And you're going to keep missing it because of the way the, the, the vocals and the audio and all that is done. Um, it's an issue I think needs to die. I, I have no idea why magic companies are continuing to put like these kind of tracks in their videos, in their teaching segments. I do realize that at times like there is need to fill an audio void. Um, while you know somebody's maybe constructing a gimmick or giving you a, like a setup or, or whatever, there's the need to fill that audio void. You know, people just maybe feel uncomfortable if there's nothing to be heard. But at the same time, you've really got to match the music uh, and and what the the viewer is listening to uh, to what the viewer is supposed to be paying paying attention to. You don't want them paying attention to the music. You want them paying attention to the actual product that they're learning. Uh, and this this habit just it needs to die and it needs to die now. I'm sorry. Your early on, Illusions was doing it. Three Eleven was doing it. Penguin Magic was. Everybody was doing it, and it just needs to stop. So that's my that's my first issue, and that's just the sound. Uh, my second issue is the price. At nine ninety five, I feel this is just a little too expensive for what you get, and this is why. And I'll show you actually later on. I'll show you another reason why as well. But essentially, what you're getting are five routines, and I say routines because uh, I personally feel that the word routine is is thrown around just a little bit too easily. There is the ambitious card routine, there is the invisible deck routine, there is maybe the four ace assembly routine, that kind of thing. Now, I have the ambitious card routine, uh, and essentially it is a, you know, a card comes to the top all the time. No matter how I perform that, no matter if I performed it behind my back or in my, you know, uh, in the spectator's hands, whatever, it's the same effect, it's the same principle, it's the same motions, it's the same basic plot over and over again. And what Seth has done was basically given you one routine and said, now I'm going to call it this if you put it in your pocket. I'm going to call it this if you let the spectator hold it. I'm going to call it this if you do it in a paper bag. That kind of thing. He's basically, he's giving you variations to the effect and naming them like new effects as if it was a new effect. 
it's not a new effect. It's, a, it's just a variation on the same effect. It's not a routine. It's a variation of the original routine. And I wish magicians would get that straight as well, because that b bothers me to no end. Because when you look at this and you go to buy it and you say, well, there's five great routines here, and then you're watching it and you think, no, there's only four. So there's only one routine. There's four variations. And that's the thing that burns me to no end, is, is the misinformation. A magician should buy, at the time they're, they're videotaping something, needs to know what a routine is. And, and I'll blame the, the magic propaganda, you know, big wheel as well, you know. They've, they've got to, like, you know, churn stuff out and make money as well. So it's, it's everybody's fault. But you're not getting routines here. You're getting one effect with a variation on that effect. Uh, and that's a misnomer as well, and that's why it needs to be priced lower. If it was five original routines uh, with original plots and original handlings, uh, each one differing from the other, then yes, it would be a, it would be definitely be a ten dollar trick. But it's not. It's it's like a five ninety five or a six ninety five at the most trick. And on the video, you are taught uh, four different variations of the uh, the cards in the box with the you know give it a little shake or, or a you know stare or whatever snap your fingers where the card that is only left out is the spectator's card. The last one is actually a nice little rising card routine. Uh, and then I have an issue with this as well, of course, and I'll show that to you right now. So this one is called Impromptu Rise. Um, this time they can actually pick a card any way they want. So let's say they take the Six of Spades. We're going to place their card relatively into the center of the deck. And uh, right here we'll actually we'll push their card all the way flush in, just like that. Now if you watch, one, two, three, their card actually starts to magically rise up. And this one is totally angle proof. And that is impromptu rise. Now, I'm not sure about you, but the first thing I noticed for this effect, and it's a nice little effect, I do like it, but the, the handling of the hands is just a little too contrived. There's just far too much going on in one small space that doesn't that, that just screams suspicious. Everything just screams suspicious like when you're holding a deck of cards and all of a sudden you're, you're doing this. It looks good. I'll be the first to admit. It does look good. It's nice. It's simple. When Seth explains this effect and how it's put together and what you need to do, you're going to learn it in 15 seconds. In fact, I think he actually takes too long to explain it. Um, but he, he explains it thoroughly. Those are just the, the, the issues I have. There's basically two effects. There's one in where the card goes down, cards go down, leaving the spectator's card, and there's an impromptu rising card based upon the same principle. Call that a different routine because it's a different effect. It's a different plot. So there you go. Two different routines on the, on the video, and they're good, but not 995 good. Okay, so there you go. So there's the, there's the three the issues I have with this. Now, those were the cons. The good thing about these, this effect is that it is completely impromptu. You can walk around with this in your pocket, Good to go at a moment's notice. It's a quick trick. It's a simple trick. Uh, if you can do a fan, you can do this effect. It's that's how simple it is. There's not there's no sleight of hand, and he literally says there's actually you know impromptu no sleight of hand effect. He's telling the truth 100%. No false advertising there. Might it be too simple? Who knows? It depends upon your presentation style. Do you want to do just simple effects? Do you just do you want to do something quick and dirty? You know, get in, get out, and like hit them hard, and there you go. Then this definitely would be for you. If you want to do a nice little rising card effect that's impromptu as well, just right out of the box, good to go, you're, you know, excellent. There's a gimmick involved, he teaches you how to construct the gimmick, the gimmick can stain your cards all the time, you can do other effects with the gimmick there, lo loaded, ready to go, uh, you have to just be aware of it, like you make sure that you know where it is at all times, and it's not hard to do because it's literally probably one of the most blatant uh, marked cards that you'll ever come into, uh, come across. Um, and I'm not going to reveal too much, but like once you see the video, you'll completely understand what I mean when I say that. Myself, would I buy this? Honestly, I don't think I would. Nothing against Seth, nothing against Paper Crane, but they're asking too much money for too little in return. It's a 25-minute video, which literally could have been pared down to 15 minutes. Uh, and lastly, lastly, I refuse, I refuse to believe that this concept has not been thought up of already. Um, it's just it just seems too simple for that to be true and I don't know why I think that I don't know why I feel so strongly about it but it's just far far too simple for this to be for, for this to not have come into somebody's thought already uh, if it hasn't then you know what kudos Seth you're, you're the man but if it has then like there's no due diligence has, has been done there's no crediting on the video there's just been like a couple thanks you know thanks to this guy thanks to that guy blah 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 and maybe that thanks means that he's talked to them about it and they've not been able to come up with anything but uh, I've been looking around, like in a few of the books you got here behind me, 
and I've read a few things that come close to it, but not quite. So I'm not about to say anything yet. But once you buy it and see how it's done, you'll be thinking, like, really? Is this it? Now, we're not paying for just the gimmick. We're not paying for the thought. You're paying for, like, the, the guy's hard work to polish everything as well. So don't get upset, like, when you buy it and say, well, this is a ripoff. Because really, it's not. You're not just paying, like, f when you buy a car, you're not just paying for the car. You're paying for the guys to put it together. You're paying for all the research and development. You're paying for everything. Cars are dirt cheap. You can buy, you know, like, if you really sourced all the pieces out, like, without labor or anything like that involved, cars would be dirt cheap, but you've got to pay everybody in between. It's the same thing with magic. Uh, like, you know, the, the trick might not, in your mind, be worth it, but at the same time, you've, like, the guys maybe spent, like, time on this, energy on this. Uh, and as he said, uh, he, he spent... Um, uh, a while polishing and presenting it. And my the funniest line in this video is hilarious. I love like the, the Jay Sankey Fober, the three eleven guys. It's like, oh this is the latest, most greatest, blah blah blah. It's like and Jay Sankey is the worst for this. Jay Sankey's like, oh I love this effect. I've been doing it for years. This is my favorite go to effect. He says that with everything. If that was the truth, his pockets would be loaded with shit by now. You know, the Theory Eleven's like this is the latest, most exciting, the greatest, we've redefined, cutting edge. Um, marketing has gotten to the point where it's just absolutely ridiculous, especially in the magic community. Is it overhype? Who knows? But my, the funniest line in this, and he says it twice, it just kills me. I nearly died, I died laughing. He says, let me get, hold on. He says, this is one of my favorite effects that I've enjoyed performing throughout the year. No S, the year. So at least he's honest in that respect. And, and my hat, if I ever wore a hat, my hat's off to him. It just It killed me when I heard that. It was hilarious. So on that note, would I, would I buy it at $10? No. Cheaper, yes. Is it worth the $10? It depends. The, the hyper-creative of you out there will definitely enjoy this. You'll definitely be able to work with it, fly with it, and, and go beyond the limitations of what you're seeing in the video. Those of you who are looking for a quick, dirty effect, I think you guys could appreciate it and, and like it. Uh, myself, I, I would not buy it. Would I recommend it? Unfortunately, no. I hate to say this. I've only ever given really two bad reviews uh, to every anything I've ever done. Uh, and it kills me to actually have to bash, not bash, but to, to talk bad about a, a fellow magician and their effect and their work. But it's just, it's, I'm sorry, it's just not worth it. And I don't feel that it, at $9.95, that what they're selling this for, that it's actually worth um, the money. $5.95, $6.95, yes, I, I would just spend that in, in a heartbeat. Out of 10, the, the entire package maybe gets a 5. Uh, it's, it's well produced, it's well filmed, it's, it's, it's a good slick product, but it's just not worth the $10. Uh, and I hate to say this. So on that note, guys, I'm going to do another video shortly just showing you all the stuff i got to get done. Uh, I'll probably be trying to churn some of these out as quick as I can. But for now, papercranemagic.com, sunk by Seth Rovner, or Seth Rovner, uh, again, I don't know the pronunciation, 9.95, I'll put the URL down below if you want to go.